Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro. So brand new tutorial here today, and this is gonna be a two-part tutorial. And this is something a lot of people have asked me, and I think it's either you know absolute beginners or coders, uh, because the, today's topic is going to be uh, taking and designing a user interface or a website from scratch in like a, an app like Adobe Experience Design or Sketch or whatever, um, and then how do you take that design and know how to properly put it into HTML and CSS and structure it? And so usually on my uh, tutorials, I'm either covering one aspect of, you know, just design like in Adobe XD or just one aspect of HTML and CSS. So I thought I would do a two part uh, video tutorial between today and tomorrow, where today I'm just going to show you how to do this design right here uh, and, and think about, you know, good design fundamentals when, you, when you're doing like website and UI design. Um, and then tomorrow we'll focus on taking the same exact design and I'll show you the thought process, at least from how I approach it um, in using uh, HTML and CSS to recreate the exact thing you see here in the browser and we'll also make it responsive as well. All right, so hopefully uh, you guys will enjoy this. And today's question is, do you use CSS frameworks or are you 100% custom or do you prefer to rate your CSS custom without any, any help of HTML or CSS uh, frameworks? All right, so go ahead and let me know in the comments i will comment with the first comment um and pin it with my answer um and yeah so let's go ahead and get started okay so let's go ahead and get started we're going to use adobe experience design for this and this is a ui design tool and i've covered it quite a bit in the past and also you can look at uh you could do a search for more of that stuff um over here is the uh, artboard uh, we can toggle this on and off i mean not the artboard but the uh section where it displays the artboards and layers um so let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing that we're going to do is get a background color. Um, depending on your purposes, it may just simply white. Um, there's no really right or wrong way in this in terms of initially choosing a background as long as it's not some massive image that takes forever to load. Um, but uh, outside of that, we're just going to use uh, for this purpose a gradient background. So we're going to choose the artboard and we'll choose this color over here we'll choose linear gradient we can move these things around um, there's a lot of different uh, css linear or, or, or gradient generators that we can use as well um, to to mimic this so the fact that this is all off um, center and stuff it's not a problem to replicate when it comes to css let's see here so um, this first color picker uh, let's choose like this color we're gonna kind of have a a vibrant uh, sort of background here, very <laughs> vibrant actually. All right, and this is fine as long as whatever you're putting on top of it in terms of content contrasts well. Uh, for instance, uh, if we took this, um, a, a rectangle like this, which is what we're going to, need to do, um, but we made it a color, like the fill for instance, let's get rid of the border here. The fill for instance, if we made it like a red, that would be horrendous. You want it to really contrast well. Um, usually close, a maximum contrast or as close to maximum contrast as possible. So in this case, it would be white. White would con contrast with this background uh, m way more so than if we just made it black. Black may not be bad, uh, and it could have a use case here, um, and it does contrast quite well with it, but maximum contrast, and for my purposes, uh, would be white here. Okay, so um, now... Uh, you have to ask yourself, you know, when you're do designing a website of some uh, some sort, you know, what type of navigation do you want to have? Um, do you want to have, you know, a horizontal navigation, um, for instance, like this? If I hit Control D to duplicate this, um, change the background color here slightly. You know, we can have our link, our logo over here, our links over here. That's completely fine. Um, or, you know, maybe we want to have something like a control panel, or a left. Uh, navigation right here um, uh, like a two column layout essentially where our navigation and, and other elements would be over here this is what I'm going to choose personally um, and for the fill uh, again when it comes to the fill because we're we're putting it right to the left side or this is all the way to the left side um, and it's going to be con we want it to contrast very well just as this white section did because the background uh, purple slash blue over here um, 
you know, for instance, like I said, if we made it red, it would still it would look bad. So you want to have a, a lot of contrast, but you do want to uh, change it up just so that you can create a separation between this over here and this over here. All right. So a light gray would work. Um, we can even do uh, like a, a desaturated light blue over here. I think that's what we'll do. And it complements it well. All right. So it's already coming along uh, very easy. Now um, we can either start working here or over here. Let's just, uh, it doesn't really matter really. Um, let's just start over here. And let's just say, for instance, we want to have a, um, maybe like a uh, avatar or, or like a picture of us or something. Um, so I'm holding shift alt and I'm left clicking and dragging out with the ellipse tool. And you could choose to have a border or not. That's kind of just personal preference. I'm not going to need to fill this in with, uh, maybe I will during the HTML and CSS part tomorrow um, with an actual image. I'm just going to leave this as a placeholder uh, at the, uh, for the time being. And then also I'm going to left click and drag with the type tool all the way out and then center this. And we'll just put uh, our name, Johnny Doe. <laughs> and then I uh, make this black. And for a text, Montserrat, I'm always using that font. It's free from Google. You can use whatever you want, of course. Let's get up rid of this here so we get more room. And uh, the size, um, go a little bit larger. You just left click and drag up to do, increase that value over there. All right, and that looks pretty good. And notice, I everything so far is really spaced out well you know i'm not taking this and just you know making some massive thing where it's touching the very edge you want to have a lot of padding a lot of margin a lot of white space as it's called uh, it'll really help the design breathe in a sense it'll be easy to use and easy to read so that's one thing that's real important now let's put just a, a little navigation over here so i'll take the type tool i'm just going to left click once and i'm going to put in home and let's also left align this All right, home, and we're gonna make this, uh, well, for now, I'm just gonna leave it at this size, um, but I'm gonna tell you, we're gonna change it, and I'll tell you why in a second. Let's go ahead, and then um, we'll do a repeat grid. So we repeat grid like this, and allows us to easily adjust the spacing in an equal manner between all of the uh, elements. All right, and then I could also, for instance, change this size, right here. So um, initially, if we just left it at the size in relation to the name right here, it, the, the, the being the same size, there would be kind of an issue when it's, when it, when it's referred to as visual hierarchy. Um, in design fundamentals, uh, visual hierarchy is really important. And basically, it's just a way of saying, all right, um, can we create separation between elements um, especially based on importance. So your name's pretty important, obviously. So we'll make that bigger. And then through design elements, through aesthetics, we're going to create separation between these elements. Uh, and you can do that in a manner of ways. Font size, color, uh, physical location, all these different things uh, plays into visual hierarchy. So uh, if I double click on this, let's make this smaller. Also through font weight. That's another way. So we can go ahead and change this to maybe regular for the font weight. All right, so now we've created separation already just through those elements. All right, so now we'll say we're happy with that. I'm gonna upgroup this, home, about me. We'll do portfolio and contact. So it's just kind of like a fictional portfolio here. Um, we're going to duplicate this container. And to even create more of a separation visually between these elements, between the name at the top and, and uh, the navigation here. Oh, by the way, I used uh, the Alt key to, to drag this down in size. We're going to kind of encase it in its own container. And it's going to be very light. So if I take this background, make it all the way light, and then make the opacity 
just right around there, we create enough of a separation between all these elements still. This this white container over here still separates over here. Um, and then this also separates between those elements. Or the element at the top, rather. I'm going to just take all of these and maybe just move them down a little bit. All right. So very simple, obviously, but still very effective in terms of design. So um, let's go ahead and do the right side. So we'll put over here a headline. So become a master. I'm just making any type of, uh, you know what, let's make it a little bit more relevant. So this is a fictional portfolio. We'll just do something like I'm a designer of things, you know, some type of trendy. <laughs> <laughs> annoying thing that uh, a lot of designers do and they try to be unique whatever um, let's go ahead and make this bold notice um, I'm making this you know again we're talking about visual hierarchy um, through a, a real large font size uh, we're making this the most important element and this is probably the first thing people are going to see it's the headline it, it, it informs people um, so in terms of marketing it's important as well in terms of the, the, the ad copy that you use um, I think we'll leave it that that's, that's pretty okay right there. Um, and then we'll have maybe like a sub headline or just a small paragraph underneath it that might expand upon, you know, the purpose of, of this page uh, a little bit more. Um, let's see here. We could just use lorem ipsum text, which is what a lot of people uh, do, but let me real quickly just uh, set this size at like 25 for now, make it regular. Again, we're creating separation through font weight and font size. You can also do it through color as well. Um, you design this thing and then make it a reality in the browser. Oh yeah. Imagine the possibilities of your new skill. Okay. This of course is not relevant at all to the purpose of this uh, design, this fictional design here. Um, yeah, that seems pretty good. You don't want to make it too large. Uh, you make it too large and it starts to, uh, I would say, not combat, but uh, it, it tries to challenge this this top up here for, for too much emphasis. So um, we'll make this a little bit small, smaller like that. I think that's pretty good. Also, you can see uh, the, the line height by default uh, where it says 29, the line spacing. You can increase this a little bit more things would be spaced out a little bit better. And then finally, let's do a, uh, maybe we'll make this come down here. We'll do a call to action button down here. And it's called a call to action. It's just like a, a technical industry term for, you know, in a, a very important button that you want people to click. All right. So this is, we're taking, make it slightly rounded. Um, and then we'll get rid of the fill. And we could use like a, a complementary color that's close to it in, in this spectrum up here, um, like blue. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and put our call to action button text, left click, drag all the way from the right to the left and center it. It's just a quick way of centering text here. My portfolio. And again, we're talking about contrast. We want things to contrast in a very maximum way. So this black on this, this uh, darker, not darker blue, but you know, pretty full on blue. Um, there's not much contrast, when, especially when we compare it and make this white. We can also make it stand out more by making it bold and adjusting the font size. Again, you don't want the font size to be too big because then that just throws off the whole damn thing. So you want equal margin space padding around the whole thing. All right, so here you go. It's only been, you know, I don't know how many minutes, but um, we already have a really solid design. Um, and just to show you for the, when we get to the HTML and CSS portion, uh, we'll do a little bit of a trendy modern background little thing here with some Bezier curves. All right, actually, let me back up just a little bit. There we go. This, of course, is entirely 
optional. So I hit escape after we've closed up the path with the Bezier curve and then um, get rid of a border. We'll give it a fill. The fill, um, you know, I've seen a lot of people, especially these days, they're doing, uh, when it comes to these type of backgrounds, um, really making these stick out. Um, you could completely do this if you want to. Um, by the way, we'll take this this main container. We'll give it a shadow just so I can show that process in CSS here. Um, we'll make a pretty big blur. X and Y of three. Something like that. It's pretty, it's subtle, uh, but it is a, a big blur radius. Um, you could leave it like this, or you could make, maybe take a more subtle approach like that. That would work as well. Um, hell, I might as well just, uh, let me see up here. If I take that, let me try to eye drop this and get a interesting shade. Yeah, you know what? I'm fine with that. We'll leave it like that. All right, so the uh, this is going to be the design or the UI that we go ahead tomorrow. And of course, if you're watching this, chances are tomorrow already occurred. So you can just watch the next video. But um, in terms of uh, right now, I'm going to be uploading the uh, the HTML and CSS process of taking this exact structure and this layout um, and making it a reality using HTML and CSS. So we'll wrap it up part two tomorrow. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. Make sure I, you guys check out the next video, which is tomorrow morning. If you're watching this in the future, it'll be already up on the channel. And make sure you answer today's question, which is, do you prefer to use a CSS framework when you're, you're starting out designing a website and doing an HTML CSS process, or do you do it 100% custom and, and the idea that you're not using any type of framework that helps you? All right, see you guys tomorrow.